Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me with the Lucid Air Grand Touring, the car we've been testing recently. And you also join me with the Tesla Model S. This is the newest Model S. It's a Plaid, no sizing difference between the dual motor and the Plaid. And I thought we got a ton of questions like, how's the space compared to Model S? What's the trunk space like? All of these things. I thought it'd be kind of fun just to take you on a quick tour of both cars. Talk about ergonomics, seating position, trunk space, maybe materials in the interior a little bit. Uh, just to give you a quick hint of these two cars. I have more to do with these two, such as driving impression differences. They're not totally equal cars. The Model S Plaid this is the tri-motor top variant of Model S. This is the Grand Touring spec for range. But in terms of sizing, well, they're about the same. So let's at least do this test and then we'll, we'll figure out what we can do more with these two cars. But let's talk about how much room there is in the Tesla Model S versus the Lucid Air. Guys, is your utility bill really expensive and have you thought about lowering it with solar? Well, perhaps you should. We've partnered with Energy Pal and if you click the pop-up banner up above or in the link in the description, you can go to their website, fill out a completely free form and their amazing advisors will help you spec the right solar system for your home. Nine out of 10 people that have gone through Energy Pal say that they have the best system at the best price that they can find out at the market. So again, I would highly recommend that you click on the link in the description below, size up some solar for your home and get some of that free solar juice. So again, a huge thank you to Energy Pal for sponsoring today's video. I can't wait to see what solar systems you guys put on your homes. This here is the newest version of the Tesla Model S. It even has the screen that swivels on the inside. This thing is brandy new and this Lucid Air pretty much has had no changes since it came out. It's still sort of revision one, if you will. And I thought, okay, well, Lucid touts a bigger interior because of you know shrinking all of their electric components and really being able to use so much of that interior greenhouse. Well, let's go through and actually see if it's better than the Model S in terms of spacing, sizing, seating position, and things like that. So these are my opinions, of course. You can go online and look up the actual cargo capacity numbers of both, but I think it's also important to know what's usable and what's not. And well, right off the bat, the Lucid A has a power front trunk, which the Model S does not, and it's a much larger front trunk. So let me show you the Lucid's front trunk up here. And you can see super duper wide. The thing is, it's only wide for a very shallow section because it becomes deep right about here. So this, I would say, is usable space. This just makes it look like it's bigger. So it might be a little bit of an optical illusion, but I actually believe in terms of cargo capacity, this is the largest front trunk of any car. You know, you have to forgo the F-150 Lightning, maybe the Rivian. But if I remove this piece here, you can see it goes really deep. And it's not quite the same as like old Model S, um, you know, rear wheel drive where those actually had the big microwave port in the back down there. But I am noticing some of the carpet isn't lining up and uh, but it certainly isn't. Maybe someone could have done that. I'm not totally sure what's going on there. Again, this is uh, my friend Peter's car that we're testing, but it is interesting to note. So I would say a much larger hood. You can see the clamshell design comes all the way over here to the side, which uh, may help with aero, not sure, but uh, definitely a large front trunk. Let's take a look over here on the Model S. So smaller opening right off the bat. You can see dust gets in under the Model S, of course, in here, but the hood is sealed at least, the front trunk area, I should say. This is the Tesla charging cable, which doesn't want to stay. There you go, ish. And this is the front trunk. So, so much smaller than the Lucid Air. You can see your tow hook baked right up here. Your, if you get trapped in your uh, escape button, but a much, much smaller front trunk in Model S. So I would say Lucid right off the bat smokes this thing in terms of front trunk space. Now, you guys know I'm not personally the biggest front trunk fan. You can see I, that this is my personal car. I don't even use it. Um, but for a lot of people, a front trunk matters. The one thing I will say about the Lucid front trunk, I'm just going to throw that in there for the time being, it actually is a little bit sketchy to use. I, I mean this seriously too. A lot of times when you close the hood on a car or a, a rear trunk that's powered, you push a button, it goes beep, 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 
and then it comes down nice and slow. Just watch this. I'm gonna hit the little close button, which is right here inside of the trunk. Don't know if you can see that. Watch, I, I'm gonna tell you exactly when I hit it and watch how quickly this thing just comes down and bam. I was like, we should put some sausages in here. See if we can squish them. Ready, three, two, one, press. Oh, didn't go, <laughs> really safe. All right, let's try again. Three, two, one, press and instantly comes down, slam. No beep, nothing. <laughs> Just so sketchy, it's like hit the button and get out. So I think that needs a little bit of software tuning to add a delay and even a small little chime or something. I'm not even sure if there are regulations about that, but that just seems kind of sketchy in my opinion. Both cars have door handles that go in. For example, these are you know, mounted here on the side and they're sort of top hinged and you can see they're really not bolted on properly. They're not on there very tough. They're pretty wiggly. If we just look over here on the Model S, you can see they are in the in position at the moment. And I'm not the biggest fan of Model S door handles either. They fail, but you can see they come out, you pull on them. And then when you close the door, they go back in. At least it feels solid when new, but Model S door handles has plagued this car over time. Ultimately, both of them retract fully in the door to provide an aero benefit while cruising. And I think that's totally fine. Okay, should we, before we get to the interior, talk about trunk space? Well, this behemoth of a trunk right here, this thing is absolutely massive. Again, no chime back here, but it does come down slower. It gives you a chance to get out of the way. Um, this thing extends all the way down the side of the car. So it's this giant clamshell rear design, which to me, is a bit of a shame. Now, one of the reasons you may not wanna go with a hatchback like the Model S has is for NVH. It creates a lot of boominess. It's hard to get the noise down when you have that big of a panel. So my guess is Lucid took the compromise rather than having a hinge trunk up here. A, for headroom, you have to put hinges up here, but also for NVH. And I think probably for the use case of this car, totally fine. It's a little bit weird in EQS, for example, another competing car that has a hatchback design like the Model S. Almost no rear headroom in that thing and huge trunk space. And I'm like, I just don't think people need that big of a trunk in, in these luxury cars. Okay, let's take a look. Pretty nice for sure. Back here, you can see super duper wide. This is unbelievably wide loading. I believe you can fit surfboards back here as well. And then there's also a really deep underfloor storage. So it goes all the way down. Look at that. Very nice, very nice. You can also fold the rear seats. Let's make sure nothing's in there. Huge back seat in this car. We'll talk about that here in a second. Let's just get everything up and out of the way for that. We'll put the seat belt up so it doesn't get squished and leave an impression in the leather. You just pull this and then I guess it unlatched and we just pull it down. Very nice and a completely flat pass through. Very similar to Model 3. I think this is gonna be your largest limitation. Um, yeah, this little piece right here is gonna be the limitation of this. But you also have a ski pass through, which is very nice. All right, so that's the trunk space of this. I think it's huge, no issues, big for a sedan. Don't think you need any more. But if you want more, you go for the Model S. One of the charms about Model S is it is an expensive car, but people use them as work vehicles from time to time. I see older Model S's with dogs in the back of them, with stuff in the back of them. It's pretty interesting. Let's see how I remove this cover. There we go. So just a massive space with a huge opening. Now, granted, you do give up a little bit of noise in the cabin for having this big space, but you can fold the rear seats. One, two, and let's make sure everything's out of there. Looks like it. There we go. And comes on down and you can get this massive, no shelf here, huge space in the back. So right off the bat, Model S wins in the back of the car with trunk space without question. So let's just very quickly want to show you. I know this is the worst filmed video I've ever done. I just want to show you under here, huge underfloor storage as well, massive. So one of the things I always loved about Model S and the reason I drive this car is I can put a set of four wheels and tires in the back of this thing 
and still go. Like if I go to the track, I can bring an extra set of wheels and tires in the back of this with everything I need without any issue at all. So a big fan of the Model S Space. But if you're a fan of using the front trunk, then I think you're gonna love the Lucid. The Lucid's got that huge front trunk. So should we do a little back seat comparison? Talk about how they each feel? Now Model S over the years have, has had different back seats that have varied in comfort from terrible to truly terrible until this latest generation. This latest generation has a sculpted back seat down here, very similar to like the old Model S executive seats. I don't know if any of you guys remember that, but there used to be a non-folding option executive rear seat. It was a four seat Model S with like a big center armrest back here for like taxi cab companies to use in limo services. And I always thought that was neat, uh, but you really did lose the practicality of the seats folding down. But I would say now, no headroom issues. I can move my head all around. I'm six foot one, side to side is very nice. Tesla finally figured out how to make the back seat of the Model S comfortable. On top of that, there we go. Sometimes it's hard to find the little impression right there. But that has cup holders, a wireless phone charger, I believe. Yes, and storage. So even though this car, it does not have the executive rear seat option, again, not available anymore, I can still have rear cup holders. I have a rear screen. I'll show you that here in a second, but uh, everything is really nice here for sure. Now, the big question is, is there a ski pass through? And the answer is, I don't believe there is a ski pass through here. I don't think people really use those anymore. Just throw a roof rack on it. It's hard to do that with the Model S glass roof, but there's some other issues back here that I'm noticing that I'm not a huge fan of. So I would say in terms of seat comfort, great job here, but let me show you some more. Now, I don't typically sit in the back of my Model S, but I can already see my headliner coming through right over here. This is a new car with, I don't know, less than 4,000 miles on it or something like that. And I can already see the headliner coming through. That's a bit of a shame. I can also tell the weather stripping totally isn't aligned here. I mean, Tesla's give, gotten so many years to get this stuff right. And these are just the little things that really do drive me nuts that I just wish they could just fix but I didn't buy this car expecting perfect quality. I know the horror stories. It's not been bad for me. Rear seat screen, truly wonderful, a huge upgrade. You can now finally control your rear heated seats, including a rear center heated seat right from the back seat. You can watch YouTube, Netflix, everything you want back here. You can even play games back here if you're feeling so inclined. So I think it's a really, really wonderful system to finally have some climate control. You can see I can adjust temperature right there. I can go into the setting. I can even move the fan around. The fan actually comes out from these little slots back here. Really, really nice. I'll just turn that off to save uh, some noise. And just overall, really nice. In terms of knee height, still quite high because there's a battery in the floor. No scalloping here, just a flat floor uh, for all the batteries to go. So let's jump in the Lucid and see what I think about the back seat in that car. And now jumping in the back seat of Lucid, one thing I want to mention is just how wide this rear door opens up. It's pretty much a 90 degree angle. The only other car that I can think of that does this is surprisingly the new Nissan Rogue. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. So let's jump in back here. I'm already noticing some extreme advantages to the back seat here. First of all, the back seat's angled farther back than the Model S, which on a long road trip, if you just want to slump down, so much more comfortable. Also on the door itself, a much nicer feeling door, nicer materials than the Model S, a little bit of wood here, and you even have auto shades to go up. So much, much bigger improvement here. I don't think it covers all the windshield and this isn't really strapped down perfectly and no shade for back here, but overall a much better back seat. Also, the back seat view is pretty nice as well. Let me just show you this view looking forwards. Really nice glass roof view of the cabin and the glass roof extends farther back than the Model S. So even if I slap slope down and look all the way up, much airier feeling. So let's test out the center armrest. I think this is the first time I'm sitting in the back of the Lucid. Maybe so. Cup holders. Nice. So we have one, two cup holders, maybe a little one in the center and a bigger storage area, but just a little bit bigger. I still think I prefer the Model S center console. I think it's a little bit beefier. You get the wireless phone chargers in there. Not that I'm a huge fan of wireless phone charging, but just more features. Um, 
overall. And then here you can see the ski pass through right in the center. So if I were to just sit here and lounge out a, a lot more leg room, let me flip the camera around. I'll show you that here in a second. But the floor is almost higher than Model S is what it feels like to me, maybe because the seat's a little bit lower. Let's talk about that. So here we are in the back of the Lucid Air. My knee's very high. Now you can option a version of the Lucid Air with a scalloped floor. I don't believe they've made that yet. They also claim they're gonna make a luxury back seat option, which this one doesn't have. There is also a sunshade, extend rear sunshade that comes up right back here. Not the cleanest and nicest sounding extension, but it works. It does work. And I would say this screen is a little bit nowhere near as nice as the Model S screen for sure. So it looks like we can adjust where we want the air to go. If we want the AC on, fan level. Can we do different fan level? That's interesting. So true four zone climate, very nice. And then also we can adjust our heated seats, including the center as well. Looks like the center is just bottom heated the back seats, bottom and backrest heated. That's quite nice. You also have the little hot keys right here, but um, I guess it looks backwards on the screen, but it's actually not. So that's pretty interesting. Really nice job there. Another nice job here is with the air vents in the back. Overall, the climate control layout in the Lucid, I think is actually better than the Tesla. A, you get physical controls, which I prefer. A lot of people don't love it, but I do. And you get B-pillar vents here, which is something you only get in the Model X with Tesla, but not with the S. So if you put dogs in the back, maybe you're not doing that with your Lucid Air, but it is really nice to have two points of air contact in the rear of the car. So big fan with that. Also, really nicely designed back seats, a little bit of storage and side pocket storage, which is quite hefty. The Model S has side pockets now too in the newest generation, which is really great. Another thing I'm noticing, speakers up here, you have this light that can be turned on, which is great. And then you also have leather wrapped, oh shit handles right here. Excuse my language, but that's what they're called. Um, leather wrapped ones, which is really a premium feeling if you're going around corners to hold on to these things. So my impression of the backseat of the Lucid is a bit more room, a lot more leg room, even considering the front seats actually farther, probably farther back than where it is in the Model S. Um, not good on the leg room. My legs are very high compared to the seat here. Um, and then the, you have additional storage, which goes pretty deep in this little compartment. And you also have two USB-C ports here. It is nice that it doesn't extend all the way. That way it doesn't wreck your USB-C ports. One suggestion I think for Lucid would be to add USB-C ports into the seats. We've been seeing Kia do this and some others. And I think that's a really useful touch. For example, Rivian has it in the headrests just an idea. But um, yeah, big fan of the back seat here in the Lucid. I think it gets a clear win over the Model S and the Model S isn't bad. It's a much better improvement over the years than the Lucid, uh, or excuse me, than early Model S. Early Model S back seat truly was not great at all. Let me just show you one more time so you can get a good side-by-side -side view of these things. You can see the seat backs so much less premium than the Lucid. No seat back pockets here, smaller side bolsters. The door itself is pretty nice. You do have a little push button to get out. I think the bottom cushion is more comfortable in the Tesla, but no question there is a bit more room overall in the Lucid than the back of the Model S. And that is surprising, especially with the windshield being that far or the roof being that far down in this car. I'm really pleased with this back seat. Let's jump in the front and see how they feel. Into the front seat now, the Model S. First things first, I just love these white seats. I think Tesla's done a great job of adding contrasting colors to them just to give it a little bit more pop on Model S and X. Really done an amazing job. I love this white seat material. It may not feel the most premium, but it is the easiest to clean. We put the muddy dogs in these cars and they just come back to brand new every time. Really pleased. So let's have a seat inside. You can look at the gauges and screens. First of all, they delivered the car without a full steering wheel. What the heck is that about? Some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm putting a round wheel on this car. This one's my personal car, like I mentioned. And so I already mentioned that's going to be upgraded. But a much bigger focus on user uh, inputs here with software than in the Lucid. We'll talk about that. But I have a center instrument binnacle here, a really big touch screen here, I believe 17 inches, wonderful size. I love this UI. In my opinion, 
No one does UI better than Tesla. There's no need for CarPlay because it's all here. It's really snappy and it just works. I can zoom out and see all of the charging points here. Really fast reaction time. Look at this, just all over the place. Software is the key. And this car has got it down. I can see all of my uh, stats about the car here. I can turn it on. It shows me all of the details. I don't need to go into how Model S operates. Whoops, sorry for covering the camera there but I'm just a big fan of the UI, the UX, and maybe I'll make a dedicated video on the Lucid's user experience if you guys would like. But I have some issues with the Model S and I guess I'll flip the camera around and show you those here in a second. So some of my issues with Model S, and this is what's really stopping me from falling in love with the car. And this is a very personal thing to me. I'm pretty tall, six foot one but I feel like I'm sitting on top of the car. I can't get low enough in this thing. I had the seat slammed to the ground and I feel like I'm just on top of it. So when I'm in performance driving, I'm like in monster truck mode. When I look out over the front end, this is eye level for me. I feel like I'm really high. This sun visor is really close to my eyes right here. And overall, it's just not the big airy cabin I would like. It has a glass roof above, but I don't actually see it from my eye level. Um, again, I sit pretty close to the wheel, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me if it has this. I like it because if I look up this way, then I can see it. But um, overall, I wish the, the, the glass roof came farther forward um, and there was just a bit more stuff up here. Now, uh, I do like the center console in the new Model S. I'll show you that here in a second as well. They did a great job compared to older ones. And ergonomically, I think they've figured out this car. For me, the whole problem would be solved if I can just lower the driver's seat about two more inches, and I think then I would be golden. I really do fit pretty well in this car other than this head issue, and I just want the seat to go down a bit. So here is the Model S center console, two wireless phone holders and chargers. You just slap your phone there and it goes. In my opinion, it gets a bit too hot to wirelessly charge. You can see it passes the Starbucks test. I can put the Starbucks here and my elbow here, unlike old Model S, which did not have any of this. So we're talking specifically about the newer ones. You can see a big center console area. If I push everything back, it goes nice and deep, tons of room, tons of storage. I mean, lots of storage here and configurable. I can pull my cup holders forward. I can pull another tray forwards here. This is another storage area, or I can just close the whole thing back if I wanted to really nice. In my opinion, the trim feels pretty plasticky. Everything's kind of plasticky in this car. Nothing is really feels that tight to me. But again, I bought this car because it's really freaking fast. Um, and it is acceptable enough for me to live with for the price because the price of a plaid to me goes to the battery pack and drivetrain. If we look under here, this is a big area unused, but there is still a nice center armrest storage location here. So that's the front seat of Model S. I think the materials are okay. I love how easy, easy they are to live with. They're hard wearing. In my opinion, I thought it didn't detract from the car enough not to buy it, but it's certainly not the S-Class level luxury experience a lot of people are looking for. No massaging seats. They are ventilated. The ventilation actually works in this car really well when you have the AC running, unlike older Model S. So really the new Model S world's different than the last one. You can watch my dad's videos. He actually just upgraded from a pre-refresh Model S to a full new one like this. And he is just thrilled. It is a night and day difference. I've also owned the older Model S before this one, and I couldn't be happier with the interior updates. But would I be happier in the front seat of the Lucid Air? That's what we have to go find out. Here we are at the Lucid Air, right off the bat, a full door and a fully closed door as well. For sound and NVH, this car is so much quieter than the Model S. I think a lot of it has to do with a fully framed door here. So a much larger opening to get in. I think if you're a bigger guy, the Model S is really hard to get in and out of. This is certainly a little bit easier, although this roof line is still low. So if you have to get in, you're gonna be ducking your head to get underneath the roof here. That's just the nature of a sedan. Cup holder situation, not nearly as good as Model S. Also, right off the bat, the cup holder blocks the UI. So if you have two cups in here, you're like hitting the screen like this, trying to hit all these menus down here. Pretty poor UI. Um, let's talk seating position. To me, that's the most important thing. Door, again, nice materials. Alcantara here, a little bit of wood. Got the beef jerky down there. <laughs> that's what happened during the range test. And... Um, 
First of all, this is eye level, not feeling that claustrophobic feeling in the Model S at all. The reason is, look up, just glass and glass and glass all the way back. So just to give you a little bit of a view, look at this windshield, insane. The one big glaring issue about this windshield are these sun visors to me. Because they're not connected to anything, they actually have a battery pack inside of them. I think they use just normal watch batteries to power that light right there. So that seems like an unnecessary complexity and maintenance item. I wish that they would have folded into the A-pillar like the Model X. Then you wouldn't have to stick on these ugly things and you could enjoy the big glass windshield that honestly is, I think, the unique selling point of this car in the segment. I really think the interior feeling is why you buy a Lucid. So if I put the seat all the way down, I certainly am not getting that Model S feeling. I'm sitting lower in the car than the Model S but still not low enough. Again, another inch off of this seat, inch and a half, I'd feel so much more comfortable. I can see all the information through the binnacle, including with the round wheel. So the round wheel adds to the experience to me. It doesn't take it away at all. I do wish it was a three spoke thinner, sportier wheel, but that's just of my preference. All of the touch points feel like they're really of high quality. They're nice, but the software, <laughs> oh boy, the software. Yeah, not so good. Just as an example, these lights never dim. So at night, you're like blinded by these steering wheel lights and everything else is dim. Uh, this ergonomic of getting to the screen isn't great. And then you get into like the actual usability of the software. And in my impression, this one has not had the big update, this 2.0 update or whatever it's going to be. Um, my opinion is it can't come soon enough. Really can't come soon enough. It needs to happen as soon as possible. Uh, overall, though, you know, the sound system's cutting out from software and it's just early days. So I really hope they get this new new package out to the cars and then I think we'll be okay. Then it's like a clear no-brainer to, to daily drive this over a Model S. The big thing for me though is if this car is going to have issues with its sound system, issues with the climate control, issues with the backup cameras, issues with the instrument cluster, and they aren't going to get fixed very quickly, well, that's that's a big you know, like that's a non-starter at that point. But Lucid claims that they're sending out a software update to this car within the next few weeks. That's going to add lane centering and a whole bunch of other stuff. I know I put it in every video, but I think it's important that you guys get the full picture. It's not like everyone watches every video, so I need to be totally transparent. Oh, by the way, one cool thing that this screen does is it slides all the way up and in a bit unnecessary but kind of cool you do get a little bit of storage back here quite a bit actually and cup holders here another storage area down here in the center usb-c and usb-a why the heck are we putting usb-a in the cars anymore it should just be all c a tiny little storage box that's made of pretty cheap plastic and then a little tiny storage container that this sits inside that seems a bit unnecessary doesn't it not thrilled with the storage in this car up front. Model S for sure has a lot more room to put things. In my opinion, might even be laid out a little bit better. I prefer the big screen for me. I know I'm the younger generation. Some people like to have these touch points, this roller, all this stuff. But for me, um, I'm not digging this three screen approach. I would just wanna have the big screen like Model S. I think Tesla just has nailed it right there. I guess it's one screen over here for your wipers, headlights and everything a central instrument cluster, your navigation screen, and then another control touch panel. I'm not against multiple screens. Look, I love Tycon, that has everything there. But I just think Tesla has the win on user interaction with the car over this, in my opinion. So let's say software isn't your defining option or the one thing that really is your car purchasing, I guess, requirement. Um, what's it like to actually sit and be in the interior of the Lucid Air? really nice. First of all, 10 times quieter than the Model S on the highway. What a highway cruiser. We're not talking driving dynamics, but just since we're on the topic of cruiser, this is so much softer, so much better of a road tripper to spend time in. We're going to get into the efficiency conversation of that car versus this car. I'm going to put that car on arrow wheels and see the differences later on. Uh, but overall, sitting in this seat, this seat almost makes the whole car. It's got a whole bunch of different massage profiles that work. It massages your butt and your back, really pleased. The heated seat heats up instantly, gets really hot. It's no EQS that heats up the door panels and the center armrest. This is still, you know, not quite there in terms of EQS levels of 
over engineering everything heated in the cabin. But um, the, the heated seat works, the heated steering wheel works really well. Model S also pretty good heated seat and heated steering wheel. Um, this ventilation system in this seat sucks though. There's no other way of putting it. I can't tell when it's on or off. Uh, and it's been like pretty hot some of these days and I get in the Model S crank up the AC seat when the AC is blasting and it's nice and cold. In this thing, not so much. So I think uh, would much, if you're living a hot weather climate, I really wish the AC seats or the ventilated seats worked a little bit closer to Rivian or Tesla my impression is they don't work that great in this car at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I had to just get into one of these two and they're parked next to each other and I just wanted to like drive across town or something, I think you'll see me getting into the Lucid every time just because the round wheel, it's a much better touch point, really nice seat with the massage. Uh, and I like that I sit a little bit lower. The one thing I don't like are the stocks. These are probably the cheapest feeling plasticky stocks in the business. And the turn signal noise is terrible. So I really hope they offer an option to change that turn signal noise because it is just not that good. Um, I have to say, even though the stocks in this car are pretty terrible, the reverse drive and they feel plasticky, at least it's not like the Model S, which you have to, to hit the turn signal on the yoke steering wheel, which is really dumb. Again, that car is getting stocks added to it and a round steering wheel. We'll have videos coming, but I can't believe they sold a car without stocks and a steering wheel. I know some people love it. My dad loves it. I Look, that's fine. You can buy it like that. Uh, I'm just glad I have the option to change it out aftermarket. So, okay, there you go. Lucid Air versus Model S. What are the verdicts? Let me think about it for a second and I'll let you know. Now it's time for the verdict. Model S versus Lucid Air interior space differences from cargo capacity to passenger compartment. Well, no question if you're a front trunk user, the Lucid Air has got it. If you're a rear trunk user, the Model S has got it. If you're a rear seat user, the Lucid Air has got it. And if you're a front seat user, the Lucid Air has got it, depending on your preference of software. Sorry for some of the wind coming in here, but this is what we got to deal with. It's real world shooting here. My preference, if I had to have one of these to own, just because I tend to carry around a lot of stuff, I love the hatchback in the Model S. To me, that's always been kind of the magical point of that car. It's why I never loved my Model 3 as much. If the Model 3 had a hatch, that would be really one of the perfect cars right there. But in all actuality, the Lucid has the next level up in terms of interior materials using real natural leather that smell and feel great. Again, I wish we could get away from using animal materials in a car, but no question, at least when it's new, it smells and feels great. In terms of the interior wearing over time, I think the Model S has got it. That is a much harder wearing thing. So if you're gonna lease it or keep it for a couple years, I think the Lucid's gonna be fine, but we'll be seeing these things with cracked seats and stains on the seats in just a matter of time. The Tesla materials, while they may not be as nice, a bit plasticier, I always find that these things just still look pretty good after years and years, the ones with the newer materials. And I'm just thinking of my Model 3 with 120,000 miles, similar materials to that car, and it just holds up nicely if you're gonna keep these things for a while. So there you go, the Lucid, no question, next level up, and just maybe requires a little bit more cleaning and care. The Model S, not far behind, not far behind at all. Tesla's done a lot to make that Model S nicer, but I think at the end of the day, if I had to say, you know, balance of space for this car's use case and carrying passengers, Lucid Air. I think that's got the win.